Hi everyone and welcome along. It's a big day today because the day this video is launched is the same day as the publication of my brand new book, Birds, Bees and Blossoms. So to celebrate, we're all gonna have a go at one of the projects inside. So grab your paints and let's get started. So here is my brand new book and for the first time on YouTube, I'm gonna share with you a project and we're going for, aha, a big old bumblebee. And uh, I just thought the bee is something that you all love to paint in my YouTube tutorials, but why not? Let's have a go at doing it in a bit more detail. So what I'm going to do is I am going to work through my tutorial with you. Um, you don't need to have a copy of the book because I imagine if you're watching this on the day of it launching, um, you might not have got your book just yet. Although I have heard that pre-orders are flying off the shelves. So to start off with, let's look at what we need. So a size two, four and two tenths brush, which is essentially saying we need a medium, a large, and a small one for detail. Cold pressed paper, which is always what I use. A pencil, a razor, and then the colors we've got yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, Mars black, burnt sienna, Prussian blue. And it's nice because we've got quite a limited palette there. Um, just helps us simplify the steps as we go through. So I'm gonna pop it to one side and we're gonna teach just like our normal YouTube tutorials, but you can be safe in the knowledge that you are getting the first look on YouTube at what, having a go at one of these projects. Um, my patrons have already been trying out one or two of these and that's one of the joys of being one of my patrons. But enough about that, let's have a go. So we're gonna draw an egg shape, a sort of upside down egg, really. And this is gonna be the abdomen. Mine looks a bit more like a potato but don't worry about it. And then we're gonna do a slightly squashed sort of circle overlapping on the top. And that is now creating the body. And actually I'm just now able to just even things up and get a nice, nice even shape there. So now I'm gonna pop in wings. It's always easier to draw one side of these things, I find. And then the other side, you can just sort of balance it up, but it is always so much harder, isn't it? Drawing those things in. I'm drawing quite heavily in my pencil, but keep it nice and light for yourself. Um, and then we're gonna do a little curve over the top with some eyes then just poking in the gaps there some little segmented legs got some antennae and then out to the side some little curved sausages to make the legs okay. And there we've got our basic B shape. So what I would now recommend you doing is just giving that a, a light rub with pen uh, with your eraser just to get it really down to the bare minimum of the pencil. And then the other thing we need to do is pop in the stripes. So we've got a stripe there, then we've got one just sort of following the line of that oval there, then one that sort of comes up a bit like that. And, and there we go. Okay, we're ready to paint. The first stage is to pick up a little bit of dilute yellow ochre on the size two brush and we're just going to do a wash over the whole bee. The next stage, once your 
yellow ochre wash has dried is to paint in some cadmium yellow stripes. So we've got one right up underneath the neck, almost like a collar. And then we've got this one here. And I'm using my size four brush because as long as your brush has a, a decent point to it, it's absolutely fine for the level of control we need. And then at the bottom, this stripe here can be cadmium yellow, but much more diluted. It just wants to be slightly fainter. And then to help with getting a slight rounded feel, what I'm gonna do is just get a slightly stronger bit of cadmium yellow and just drop it in at the sides there on those two. And you see it instantly brightens up the sides and just gives them a slightly more 3D feel. And now with my smallest brush with the size two tenths, I'm gonna outline the legs. Um, and you can see, there we go, there's a leg. So outlining like that, the different sections. And then these funny little um, little curves. And then and what I'm going to do, clean my brush off and then I'm going to just rub with some water. Just pick up the tiny bits of black in the outline there and just draw it in to the legs themselves which will leave you with just a slightly shady colour. So I'm going to do all the legs and then we'll go to the next step. The bee looks like it's put its tights on. Um, so now time to create the eyes and what we're going to do again we're going to outline them with Mars Black clean off the brush and then we're just going to draw the colour inwards but this time we want to allow for a little bit of shine so we're just going to leave a little bit of unpainted space on both of those. What I'm really keen for this book to do is to really show you how a seemingly quite sort of detailed and maybe a little bit of an intimidating project actually is just a series of techniques that you're already really familiar with, especially if you've been following the YouTube channel and um, yeah, that you can apply these then to all sorts of projects. Okay, now we're gonna run a little bit of Mars Black along the antennae just sort of along the top curve. And then if you look closely, it's incredible. Bees have these kind of almost like um, dots along the antennae. So just with a almost clean brush, just a little bit of water. The tiniest bit of the black. Okay, so here we are with step three. Time to turn the page Ooh, and we're getting into the business end. So we are now going to create the, the little hairs all over the bumblebee, which is called pile. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint in the black sections of the body first and we're going to use the two tenths brush and we're going to use the Mars black again. So clean off your brush. We'll get some black into the palette and we're going to draw in the bristles and what we're going to do is we're going to draw them draw the color in from the edge okay so i'll show you what i mean just want to get the exact right kind of ugh, there's a hair on the brush Okay, so what I'm going to do 
is I am going to begin this section down here. And I'm going to outline it with these little dashes. And those little dashes can sort of overlap a little bit into the other stripes. But you can see the black is quite concentrated. I just wanted to get it quite wet as well. I don't want it too thick. Okay, clean your brush and use the wet bristles to just draw in that colour and fill up the shape. So it takes a moment to almost re-wake up the black, but you can just see how much pigment there already is on your page. And I'm doing little sort of circular motions almost, just little little ones, just filling it up slowly, taking my time. If you wanted, you could get your larger brush doing this little bit, but you can see that the small brush just means you've got lots of control. And I'm just going along, dabbing that colour, making sure it's really got in there. Okay, so I'm going to do this one and that one with the same technique. And now our bee is just starting to get a little bit of a fluffy appearance, looking more like a bumblebee. Up here at the top, we're going to create little dashes across here, but we're actually only going to draw them down in a sort of curve from there. And then we're going to create some little dashes here and create a little band again that sort of comes just underneath the eyes. I can hear a bee buzzing just outside the window actually. Maybe he's coming to see what, what his portrait looks like. Right, now it's time to really get some texture on here. So we are going to begin from the bottom upwards and we're actually going to add little hairs to the whole of the body. Um, so what I need to do is I first need to mix up a little bit of shadow mixture. So we've got burnt sienna and in this case we're using Prussian blue and I want to get it really nice and dilute. Perfect. Because this section down here is not quite as bright yellow as the rest of the yellow stripes. So we're just going to use some shadow to begin with and we're going to do it so faintly that we almost can't see anything. It's so dilute but we're now actually working in texture onto the actual body itself and just as we meet the black we're actually going to just get a little bit of cadmium yellow and put in a few dashes just there. And now I'm going to get some fairly concentrated Mars Black, make sure my brush is in a fine point and I'm going to just paint out dashes. I think Ultimately, it doesn't really matter where you start, but I like to start from the center. Um, starting from the bottom is fine, just as long as we don't disturb the wet yellow that we've just painted in just there. But just try and keep a nice light touch, and you can see that the paint goes for miles. We don't need to be constantly reloading our brush with colour. And also we want to try and get a slight sense of that lighter black colour underneath. 
So just, yeah, go slowly, keep it nice and delicate, but also nice and small, tightly packed, so they all just look like nicely rowed hairs. And I'm just gonna work my way up gradually until we have a whole fluffy bumblebee. For the yellow stripes, I'm, I've mixed in a little bit of yellow ochre with my cadmium yellow just to get a slightly richer and more obvious yellow hair. Painting this section here, we've got um, both edges of the sort of puff ball, as it were, and so how do we navigate the direction of the hairs? Well, what we do is as it gradually comes into the center, what I'm gonna do is, is gradually sort of dilute the paint down a little bit and just try and actually draw it in and create almost like a light bounce, a, a bouncing bit of light. So we're just drawing it all in with an increasingly diluted bit of paint. And what's helpful is because we already did do a wash of that black in the previous stage, that really helps from underneath just building out the sort of the roundness and the the light okay so we're going to be sort of filling out these hairy bits and also that little bit of yellow there but also we can just with a bit of black fill in that central section now as well So the next stage is to give the legs a little bit of hair. We're using yellow ochre. They've got these lovely golden hairs just sort of tufting off all the legs. And um, because the way in which we've painted the black, just outlining it and then drawing in that color with a wash means that it's really quite a faint color and allows the yellow ochre to show up over the top without too much trouble. So we're still using our smallest brush, the two tenths, and we're very near the finish line. The final stage is to do some detail on the wings. So the, the first thing we do is get a bit of burnt sienna on our, on our little brush twizzle it to make sure I've got a nice fine point and I'm just gonna paint a line of the burnt sienna across the top of the wings as I said it's always easier to do one side okay then I've got some slightly more concentrated shadow mix and um, in the book you get a nice sort of guide to put in a few leaf veins So I'm just painting those in, in shadow mix. Nothing too strong. And as is often the case for me, it's all about being able to add a bit of shadow to the piece uh, as a finished piece uh, and I find that always really makes it pop off the page. Um, so the first thing we can do is add just a little bit of shadow to the underside of the legs. Thank you. 
then I want to add a tiny bit of actual sort of Mars black, just a bit more concentrated to the eyes there, just to get a tiny bit more sort of zing on it. And now I'm going to take my size two brush and I'm going to make sure I've got a very dilute bit of shadow mix. And I'm just going to spread that out from the center. and clean off my brush and just let it stretch out across across the wing and sort of blend in a little bit and then just a little bit and this is where you just need to be careful um, popping a little bit around the side and the base but don't forget, of course, it's a hairy texture, so you might just want to use your brush with a bit of action like that. And it's funny, it feels like it wouldn't do much, but it really does. And there we go. That is your bee from Birds, Bees and Blossoms. There he is. So you get a lovely, large, detailed drawing and step-by-step -step diagrams. And oh look, we've got plenty more for you. So I cannot wait for you to get your hands on this book. And um, yeah, happy painting. If you haven't yet got a copy of the book, you just need to go into the episode notes and I've got links for you to get a signed copy from me from my Etsy shop or if you want to go straight to the source I go to Amazon or the large booksellers we've got links for that as well and hopefully we can get it to you wherever you are. Thanks so much for watching. It's really wonderful to be able to share this amazing day with you. And I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support. Um, that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you liked it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that project. And of course, if you want to subscribe, then hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell down below and you'll never miss another video. And of course, if you haven't already got your copy of Birds, Bees and Blossoms, just head down to the episode notes and you'll find links to get it wherever you are in the world. Until next time, bye!